So on the morning of August 10th, I was outside and it was kind of a humid and muggy morning when I noticed that it looks like the sky was changing a little bit and I've started to feel a few waves of cold air coming and usually that's a pretty bad sign that there's a good storm coming. So I quickly picked up as many loose objects as I could around the deck and all of the, around the house and I went inside and then this happened. Now thankfully for us we weren't in the worst of the storm, but other islands around the area caught much worse than we did. Over 100 mile per hour winds, which are hurricane force winds that were hitting land, and just completely leveled a bunch of farm fields, elevators, all of the livelihoods of many of these farmers uh, just ahead of the harvest season that's coming up. So really feel for all these people and all the devastation that happened. Luckily, like I said for us, we were okay, but my thoughts are with everyone else that has experienced such a hardship from this. There's a lot of people who still don't have power even in certain areas and this has been over a week that they haven't had any power. It's a very difficult situation so please keep everyone in your thoughts for this. And I personally went out and checked out a couple of the fields today and it's really nothing that I have ever seen. I've been kind of close to a few tornadoes in the past, not really in the direct line of them but have seen pretty close some of the devastation and this is even just as crazy. Well, I don't think I've ever seen any cornfields that have looked quite like this. So we're definitely feeling for all those people here and the big part of our state is agriculture and all that goes with it. Thank you as well to all of you who sent me a message and asked if we were okay and if everyone in the area was okay. So appreciate that as well. So holy cow today, what an absolutely crazy storm. I'm about to go check out the renovation and see how it looks. And I was just basically watching from across the street hoping that we have enough grass in place now that it wasn't gonna wash all that soil out or the rest of the grass seed. Now we're on day eight today and I've been pleasantly surprised with the progress so far. That ryegrass, I'm telling you, you add a little bit into that mix there to make sure you have some grass in place and that things uh, aren't gonna wash out as easily once you have some grass growing. In. I've been really impressed with how fast it came up. That came up in three days. The bluegrass has been at about six days. I started seeing a few of the bluegrass plants. So let's take a look at what it looks like and show you an update on how things are doing. A couple things to take note of. First off, all of this tall stuff here is the ryegrass. All these little tiny plants that are just emerging and are not as tall as these are the bluegrass. And you also notice a lot of times on ryegrass that you will have sort of a, a purple reddish stem on the bottom of the plant. It's a good way to tell the difference and they're obviously much taller and much more mature at this point. So the other thing I've been really happy with and I'm glad we spent the time on was this above ground system here that we use. We've got really great coverage going and that's made a huge difference in terms of how this has done. You know, a lot of times when you're doing a renovation, you're trying to move sprinklers around if you don't have a system and you find areas that aren't getting hit as much. And with this system here, essentially we are setting it up almost like it was an in-ground system, as close as we could get it to that. So we were getting coverage from both sides. It really, it really did a great job there. I threw a little extra ryegrass down in this section right over here just because I knew it was going to get a lot of shade and it's doing really well. Same with that spot back there. A whole bunch of ryegrass that has come up. Some of that got washed back into that section from this coming off the house here, but for the most part, got pretty even good coverage. Some of these areas where we don't have soil or as much covering, it's a slightly thinner right now, but I'm not worried about it. I do see bluegrass coming into those, and remember that bluegrass takes time to mature and will spread. 
So I'm not worried about how thin it might be at this point. We'll wait until, you know, at least a month in to see how things are looking as far as thickness goes. We'll be waiting a little longer to see if there's some bare spots that might need more seed. So front yard here, now of course this didn't have as much cover here of dead grass. It was much more of the soil that we put in. So anytime you're dealing with more bare soil and not as much of that old grass to hold the seed in place, you get a little more worried on how much might actually wash out if you have a storm. But we were pretty lucky that most of the rye grass came up pretty quickly and has been holding the rest of this in place. Now after today, I was expecting to come over here and at least see quite a bit of washout, but I do not see much washout of anything. So that's fantastic news. It's going to allow us to get all of this to continue to establish. The grass will be catching up and coming in here as well. So I'm really thrilled with how everything looks in the front and especially having all that soil and not washing out. Very, very happy about that. And we crossed our fingers and got the seed up before we got any major storms. A couple things to take note of that I'm getting some challenges with. One, that spreader that I used with the perennial ryegrass is the cheap Scott spreader and my neighbor has been having problems with it that I personally have not really ever seen as much where it's leaving a line of either fertilizer or in this case it's actually leaving a line of extra grass seed that was put down in that spot. Now there's nothing I can really do about it at this point. It doesn't seem extremely heavy to where I'm going to have any major long-term issues. Everything will fill in around it, but just one thing to note that spreader I know a lot of you have commented on as well that you've had some similar issues. Now this section out here we didn't do as much covering on and we don't have as much new soil in place and I think the watering coverage may be slightly lighter than I would like it to be. I'm not seeing as much growth out into this area as some of the other areas. Now there is some going in there it's not like it's completely bare by any means. I think the plan here will be to add some more seed into these spots in this section cover more peat moss on this section so it has more of a chance to hold in the moisture and that way we should be fine long term. I, like I said there's some stuff growing in here it's just not nearly as far along or as thick as some of the other areas so I want to intervene at this point make sure that this doesn't get too far behind of everything else so I'll be doing that soon maybe today if it cooperates yet. I've got a similar situation going basically right along this line where we didn't cover with peat moss and it's not bare soil, new soil like this section right here. Similar basic thing going on right there. Just a lot of thin areas where there's grass growing but not nearly as good as these other sections. So I'm gonna get those covered with some peat moss. Make sure that I'm getting more moisture on those and long term everything should match fine. So I guess I would just say overall this is extremely exciting stuff. This isn't even my lawn but I love growing in new grass and especially high-end grass seed. It, you can already tell the color difference from what was here before. It's just night and day difference. I'm looking forward to those first few mills. I'm gonna let my neighbor enjoy the excitement of the process and so I'll probably just be getting some footage, but I don't know exactly when the first mowing will happen, but it just depends on how it's looking and how fast that ryegrass is getting up. We have to let that dry out enough, especially on this section, to walk on it without doing a lot of damage. And I think we'll be trying to use a manual reel mower on the first few times. Again, so you can pick it up at the end of turns, and it just has always worked a lot better for my renovations, so you don't have to bring a heavier machine on there. But so far, really looking good. So I'm going to mix up some seed, just a small amount to put on some of those thin areas out front. My neighbor and I are going to put some more peat moss on there to make sure it's got good moisture. So I've got my three types of bluegrass again, Midnight, Blue Bank, and Mazama. So I'm just doing equal amounts. That's one of each of those. Let me get my ryegrass. Probably about a half a cup will do it. Now I'm gonna mix this all up. That's good. I'm gonna use this little hand spreader. It should be easier to maneuver this. This will allow me to spread without really walking on those areas either. I usually just set this down over here on one of the lowest settings and especially with the bluegrass being so small, it should be able to go on one of the lowest settings.
So uh, there's something that I got in the mail a couple days ago that I had been waiting on for a little while and I want to actually open up here. So appreciative of everyone watching. We got to this milestone, uh, I'd say a few months ago, maybe in the springtime. You don't see anything yet. It's a little letter from YouTube. And here it is. I'm even gonna take it out of the plastic. Just wanted to say thank you all for watching and I'm not really sure where I'm going to display this yet, but I'm sure I'll find somewhere. So thank you again. This is really, really cool to get to this point and we have just a continued audience growing all the time. So again, I'm very humbled by that and thanks so much for watching.